the bride and groom both are university grads and they're quite interested in statistics and facts, things of that nature. In fact, you might say quite stimulated by them. I bet that they didn't know, you didn't know a little piece of information which I'd like to pass on from SATS Canada. And that's this, that if you took all the after dinner speakers of all of the wedding <coughs> engagements uh, for the month of August, all across Canada and laid them end to end, they'd end up a lot more comfortable than sitting on their hard chairs. <laughs> but statistics can be very interesting. Uh, I'd like to start, I think, I mean, pretty well felt that toast classes. Now I'd like to have you rise with me for the first toast to the bride and groom. To Galen and Bruce, to their health, to their happiness, to a life and full of romance and love that just keeps on growing. Galen and Bruce. Down on the uh, extreme, <coughs> pardon me, on the extreme left end is Laura Delfs, right me, and Laura is originally from Grand Prairie. And now resides in Edmonton. Laura and uh, Gay were residents, uh, partners, I guess you could say, at uh, U of A. Besides Laura is <coughs> Sandy Hayward. Sandy is a teacher, and I guess we'll be getting into the swing of things in a few days in Innisfil. Uh, Sandy also uh, was in res with uh, Gay Lynn and Drew of Hayward. In fact, they both had the same room and played in the band together. <laughs> Susan uh, Moody, uh, Gay Lynn's little sister there, <laughs> is, uh, I, I really can't say too much about her because I just you take it out on me. <laughs> but uh, uh, Susan uh, is a work coordinator and intake coordinator for Western Industrial Research and Training Center in Edmonton and uh, has a very interesting job there. Trevor, by the way, is very reluctant to give after dinner speeches. 
<laughs> but he frequently gives one of the best speeches that I've heard. And he does it to many people, and he does it time and time again. And in fact, he's done it here today, although he didn't tell everybody. His speech was very briefly, Waiter, bring me the check. <laughs> so thanks for taking that up again. <laughs> As MC, I'm obliged to make a few serious comments about marriage. Bruce, it is true that a man is incomplete until he's married, then he's finished. <laughs> said, Bruce, that a man can be a fool and not know it, as long as he's single, but not after he's married. <laughs> you know, I read high and low trying to find a list of qualifications and a very nice, neat list that I could give to the married couple, so that they would sort of have a guaranteed checklist that would lead them to a successful and happy life. <clears throat> it ended up with an awful lot of characteristics. So I felt probably the best way to sort it out into something <clears throat> quite coherent was to feed it to a computer and uh, condense it down. And sure enough, I got a very, very short definition of what makes uh, a perfect couple. Um, perfect couple is comprised of a blind wife and a deaf husband. <laughs> Time for one, I'm getting a little angry already. <laughs> Gladly relinquish the mic here to the first uh, significant toaster of the evening, uh, my sister-in-law Carol, who was going to make the uh, toast to the bride, Carol Johnson. I hope I talk into this thing right. They always make me nervous about some friends. <laughs> I had them with me in church. And my sister's over there. I've been fighting with this one over here. But I'm not going to tell you yet. I won't tell you yet. I'd like to say, honored guest, I'm certainly glad you came to see me. Good evening to you all. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gideon and my children grew up together. Now, not in the same backyard exactly, but in the common area of their grandparents' farm, they met often and they were good friends. And they got lots of good advice for myself and my sisters and their family on how to raise gaming. Trying to bring up this girl was a problem. Personally, I being the oldest sister, my opinion was much more experienced. <laughs> and I really felt that if she was going to amount to anything at all, she would have, couldn't be raised only on her mother's theories, for heaven's sake. Peggy <laughs> had theories the law. <laughs> In spite of me and the rest of them, she matured. I had seen her snatch a toy from my girls for 19 and a half years. <laughs> Ashley, they had become a very good organizer and a hard worker who was very thoughtful of others and only just a, a little absent-minded at times. She has her father's interest in economics, too. She knows the value of it all. <laughs> but the day she blew her cool in the laundry room in front of some strangers, when she found that her clothes in the dryer were not dried yet, it shows that she can't be worried about economics and absent-minded, too. <laughs> Can you imagine this lovely bride? Waving her arms and expostulating as yelling, lies, that these crying laundries didn't try for the dawn. They were cheating her, the public, the world, even though I'm her, for heaven's sake. <laughs> and then, with strangers looking on, she marched 
the machine to put some more quarters in the flip slot. She rung the machine another cycle, but found her first set of money still there. <laughs> she forgot to push the thing in the start <laughs> No wonder her clothes were still wet. Towards her face red. Now I must, must admit that Gaylin has turned out to be a niece to be proud of. We love her, all my sisters and I. And she's a daughter to be proud of. And I'm sure Bruce will find her a wife to be proud of if he can convince her to be really positive about his goal. <laughs> if he or she, however, finds the steam rising in the laundry room over some little thing, I would like to give him a little reminder that the help is all for. Please reach for each other with love. Put your arms around each other like this. <laughs> Think it over for a moment, and your marriage will survive for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, toast to you. <laughs> Anyway, she got home. 
Mrs. Schwarzenberg, guess what, Mom? <laughs> we are in Mr. Gage. Beaming. <laughs> and then Dad walked in. Guess what, Dad? And Dad said, Greg got a job. <laughs> Well, that was just the beginning. She told everybody. She told people she met on the street. We got we got congratulations phone calls, and we didn't even meet with anyone new. So, so anyway, she came back from Edmonton, and she was looking pretty sheepish when she walked through the door. And Ruth said, "Well, if it isn't the fog part of the other number." <laughs> Anyway, that's that be warning to you all. If you have some little bit of news that you want to spread all over it, doesn't know where it is, and pass it on to the box. <laughs> Actually. Anyway, I'd like to propose the toast um, to our friends down the hallway. The uh, next event on our agenda this evening is a song entitled To Life and Put Her On the Roof. And uh, this song will be sung by Chris Moody, and the accompaniment on the piano will be Brian Red.
threshold and uh, in the room <coughs> the spirit backyard came back in with the luggage and a golf bag. <laughs> the uh, bridegroom was a little to the bride, was a little taken back, but well, she thought anyway she better go and get out of her job and gear and into something a little more comfortable, so she went to change. She came back in and the groom was uh, had his golf balls out and his butter and he was Fighting across the floor into the little cup as best as good. Bright looked at him and said, You know, uh, this really the appropriate time for golf. And he said, Well, got a bit of a confession to make when it comes to golf. I'm a bit of a, an addict. Um, I have to have some practice at least every day, at least half an hour, and I would prefer to get at least nine holes in every day. And uh, as long as you remember that, I'm sure we'll have a very happy marriage. Well, the uh, bride, perhaps seeing the opportunity here, said, well, I guess as long as we're making some confessions, I have one to make too. And that's the, you know, prior to our engagement, I used to be a hooker. And so the groom looked across the bride and he says, Well, that's no problem. Don't worry about it. Come on over here. I'll show you. It's just hard work. <laughs>
So, in completing my comments, I would just like to thank Bruce and Gay for letting me share a portion of this special event. Families are still the greatest institutions going for people and for our country, in spite of what the politicians may be saying we need these days. And I'm really pleased to see such two fine young people starting out at the foundation of a new family. God bless you both. Whoever said I forgot to mention the time tomorrow morning at brunch, it will start at 10 o'clock and probably continue on and feed you the time. Second number in which we'd like you all to join in, and this is Anne Murray's Could I Have This Dance? 